One year on from our stage one consultation, we've been working hard to develop our proposals. On the main site, we've been focusing on the main plot plan and the architectural considerations around that and our dialogue with the local authorities continue on these matters. Much work has also been carried out on our associated development sites, that is our park and ride facilities and our accommodation campus proposals. The development of our transport and accommodation strategy aims to reduce the potential traffic pressure caused by workers and freight moving to and from the Sizewell Sea development site. It's a complicated and multifaceted set of considerations. This slide aims to try and simplify the process that we're going through in order to arrive at the detail of our park and ride proposals and our campus proposals. Starting at the top of the flow chart, as I've said, we are doing a lot of work on the detail of the jetty design. This considers, if you like, the quantity of material that could be brought in by sea. But the source of potential materials is also a consideration in this. We're also doing work on rail routes to understand how many freight trains we could get into the site in any 24 hour period. And together, the jetty design, our success in securing rail routes and the source of materials will input into the quantity of freight that we can bring by sea or by rail. Only once we have established that will we be able to work out the residual quantity of freight that is needed to be brought in by road. Our socio-economic analysis, combined with our workforce number estimates, will enable us to calculate the number of non-home-based workers that will be employed in the Sizewell C project development. So this will in turn inform the number of people, the number of vehicles, if you like, cars that will be required on the road. It will also inform the number of beds that we might require in our campus. But just thinking about the transport, if we then have the total quantity of freight required to tra travel by road and the number of people on the road, we can put that into the existing transport models that we have to do what's called with development transport model. This is work we still have to do, but once it is done, it'll enable us to work out the capacity that we can accommodate on the roads with or without any road improvements and enable us to do the detailed design of our park and ride sites. On the worker side, will also enable us to work out the size of the campus that we might require. With regard to the accommodation campus, at stage one and in subsequent engagement with local authorities and parishes, we have been very clear that we wish to progress with a single campus option. By building a single campus, there are significant efficiency benefits to the project and we could manage all issues effectively on one site with an accessible workforce in situ. Having a concentrated workforce allows the creation of a more attractive campus environment, which should encourage occupancy levels, good workforce practice, and allow us to deal with any issues that could impact on the community cohesion swiftly. Another advantage of a single site is that we would be able to forecast and manage traffic flow of campus workers from their accommodation to the development site. Before we get into the detail of our associated development sites, I wanted to explain a little bit about the complexity of the process that we're going through in making our site selection process. It's a detailed and iterative process and we are only part way through it. There is still a good deal of work to be done. Inputting into a site selection are many factors. Of course, there is the consultation responses that you've all kindly given us. But we also need to factor in our site engineering project considerations, environmental considerations, land considerations, transport issues, as well as, of course, planning policy matters. All of these factors will bring to bear in our ultimate decision-making process as we go forwards. There is still time to influence our decision-making by providing further consultation responses as we go forwards, and only then will we make our final site selection. It's still early days in the development of our preferred proposals, but the following slides indicate a direction of travel and indicate for each of the associated development sites that we can, what are the lead sites, what are the reserve sites and what sites are discontinued. It is worth noting at this point that all the sites we identified at stage one had merit and were potentially plausible and deliverable options. However, providing early no notification of the status of these locations well in advance of further formal consultation on detailed proposals, we can provide more certainty to communities near the sites. Park and Ride North. 
three site options were put forward at stage one for Park and Ride North. Option one, Yoxford Road. At stage one, respondents expressed concerns over traffic increase on part of the B1122, landscape and visual impact, especially from Minsmere Special Landscape Area, were also noted. Option two, Darsham. This was a clear preference from stage one responses, suggesting it is a suitable location on the A12, near the train station and existing development abutting the site. It was noted as having potential legacy benefit, but possible ecological and archaeological constraints were also noted. Option three, A12, A144 junction. Stage one feedback noted concerns for safety around the junction. It was noted to be further away from the main construction site with possible ecological and archaeological constraints. It was a viable site, but less attractive than the Darsham site. The lead site for Park and Ride North is Darsham. The A12 A144 junction is the reserve site and Yoxford Road has been discontinued. We have identified Darsham for the following reasons. Whilst this is not an exhaustive list, it is an indication of our rationale. The benefit of proximity to Darsham Rail Station for any workers wishing to travel partly by rail, the potential increased benefit to nearby businesses, the layout, design and landscape buffering is considered capable of mitigating impacts to nearby residential properties. The location responds to stage one feedback to limit traffic levels on the B1122. It has a potential legacy benefit for rail station car parking. The locality of the site is relatively more developed than other site options. Park and Ride South. Three site options were put forward at stage one for Park and Ride South. Option one, Wickham Market, which was stated as our preferred site. Feedback from stage one indicated a clear preference for this site. It is easily accessible off the, lay, off the A12. It has the least environmental impact and residential impact. It's the most northerly of the sites and therefore closest to Sizewell, although there is concern about existing on-site archaeology. Option two, Woodbridge. Stage one feedback noted concern about the development on the edge of Woodbridge and the proxi proximity to Filingase High School. Access to the site straight off an existing roundabout was noted as a concern and there was also concerns expressed over the landscape impact. Option three, Potash Corner. Here stage one feedback indicated concerns about environmental and highway safety impacts, but particularly residential impacts given the proximity to Bredfield. Wickham Market remains our preference, hence it is the lead site. However, we need to understand the outcome of the archaeological surveys recently completed before we can confirm this, and this will probably be ne early next year. The primary reserve site is Woodbridge. We are aware of a recent application for housing on the other side of the road, and of course we would have to take this into account if Wickham Market had to be discontinued. Potash Corner could potentially be discontinued. Again, this is subject to the outcome of technical assessments on the archaeology at Wickham Market. Campus accommodation. Three site options were put forward at stage one for campus accommodation. Option one, development site, which was stated as the preferred site. This was viewed by the majority of respondents as the most appropriate site due to its proximity to the construction site. There was local opposition, which is noted and understood. It was also noted as the most sustainable option, given that people could walk or take a short shuttle to work and greatly therefore reducing traffic impact. There is a potential conflict with the blue rail route to site that was noted too. Option two, Sizewell Gap. This was the least favoured site by respondents to stage one. The site is wholly within the area of outstanding natural beauty and it was noted as, as remote from the construction site giving rise to traffic disturbance. Option three, Layston East. Stage one feedback noted that this was partially within the AOMB and close to a European designated site. It was also noted that it was remote from the construction site and therefore could give rise to traffic disturbance, although it did give rise to easy access to Layston, where individuals could make use of local facilities. The development site remains our preferred option, so it has been identified as the lead site. Layston East is the reserve site and Sizewell Gap has been discontinued. The development site is an attractive option for a lead site because 
Our experience at Hinkley Point C tells us that the contractors there have identified the development site campus as their clear preference. It would facilitate the increased productivity at the workplace, which could result in a reduction in the overall numbers of workers required on site. It would allow a rapid response to any site-based issues that may arise during the execution of the works. And it reduces the level of impact upon the wider area, particularly in providing accommodation, social requirements and traffic management. Rail options. At stage one consultation, we proposed either a rail extension into the construction site or a new railhead in Leyston. The rail extension option itself had three alternatives proposed, the red, green or blue routes. We indicated that the green and red routes were preferred, but we now wish to focus on the blue and green route options for further assessment. We continue to plan to use rail to bring materials to the site and are conducting further design work on these options, including the examination of environmental impacts and how various local roads and landscape features could be crossed. We will also be conducting ground investigation works on the options in the coming months. Overall, all of this work will inform our view on our preferred rail option. Size will see what's next. We will consult communities living near the lead associated development sites early in the next year. We will continue with workshops and consultation with local authorities and the DEFRA agencies. And alongside this consultative activity, ongoing environmental surveys and assessment, along with engineering design work, will continue. All of this activity will lead to the detailed proposals we will present for further formal consultation later in 2014. We have always expressed our intention to demonstrate an openness and a willingness to listen to the community as we progress through the Size will See project. I hope that this update has reconfirmed that commitment to you. Thank you.